Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we are going to make a crop system where you can grow your own crops. Let's get started. The first step is to go to the description of the video and find a crop. Once you have the crop model, you can go into your Roblox Studio game. So I'm in the game right here and we can go to the toolbox and to my models and we can choose the crop for a cr crop growing system. There we go. Let's move it around to some some place more fitting, like for example here. And I can use Control D to duplicate it. And then I can make as many as I want to. Now we can go to the workspace and insert a folder. Let's call this folder crop folder. Sorry, crops folder. Crops folder. That's very important. Crops folder. Okay, let's select all of our crops and let's drag them into the crops folder. There we go. Now we can go to server script service and insert a new script. Let's just call it leader stats handler. When you're playing a game and you can see some stats, for example, money, coins, kills, whatever, that's leader stats. So that's what we'll be doing right here. And I will make a leader stat called wheat. So everyone can see how much wheat they have. Okay, so let's first get the player service, which we get by doing game, get service players. And then we will create an event called player added so we can find a player. And when the player joins, we want to insert a folder into him, into the player. And this folder will be called leader stats. There we go. And we will also insert a new int value, which is a value with, o with no decimals, okay? No decimals. And we will call it wheat. Make sure to spell leader stats and wheat exactly like I do in these brackets. Okay, so let's put this wheat into the folder. Let's put the folder into the player. Okay, that's our first script. Now let's create another script and let's call it crops handler. Okay, so now we will get our crops folder. So we know it's under workspace. So we will just go under workspace and wait for the crops folder. Okay, so we also want to make a variable called grow time. Now you can set this to however many seconds you want. I want it to be like, let's say 15 seconds. Okay, let's call, uh, let's make a new, new local function called grow end. This is when the growing is done, basically. So let's do for crop in pairs, crop dot crops, get children do. So what we are doing here is going into these crops and get into the crops folder and now we will do something to each and every one of these crops. Okay. And we are going to do something as simple as changing their size to 0 0.4, comma, 1, comma, 0 0.4. Make sure to get these numbers correct. Okay. So crop dot position plus equals vector three dot new zero crop dot size dot y divided by two and zero crop dot color equals color dot from RGB two five five two five five zero. Now this is a color the uh, crops will be when it, they are done growing. And you can of, ch of course change this if you like to. So it does not matter. You can change this to blue or black or whatever color you want. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go down here and enter enter crop dot dirt dot proximity prompt dot enabled equals true. This proximity prompt thingy is you know in games where you, you see stuff like press E to do whatever that's what this proximity prompt is doing and we are enabling it because 
we will now use it to like harvest the crops. So yeah, crop dot dirt dot proximity from dot enable sorry dot action text the text will be harvest. Okay, great. Let's just copy this function. Go down. Call this grow start. Let's copy this too. Put it up here. Set set it to false. And in here, put this crop thingy at the top. There we go. So the position at the top. And then the size will be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Very important to get these numbers right. And the color of this will be 31, 1, 2, 8, 29. So you can see it's this green color. Crop dot transparency equals zero. In other words, it will be visible. Okay, so we can remove this. There we go. Let's make another function called local function harvest. This is when we actually harvest the crop. So we will also get the player parameter in here. Now we will do the harvest function. Okay, so for crop in pairs, crop dot crops get children do crop dot transparency equals one and uh, crop dot dirt dot proximity prompt dot action text equals to grow and let's just copy this line here set this to true and set the player dot leader stats dot wheat dot value plus equals one and one more for i loop down here before crop in pairs crops folder get children do local can place equals true local local grow equals false and then crop wait for child dirt dot proximity prompt dot triggered connect function player and if you can place then can place equals false because there's already now a crop at this spot so then we can do a coroutine because in this coroutine we will grow this crop let me show you so we do grow start crop task dot wait grow time and grow end crop and then grow equals true so basically we are here waiting for it to grow and then growing it and then completing the growing thingy but if someone let's say someone is triggering another crop at the same time that we're waiting nothing will happen because it's waiting so that's why we have to do a coroutine so we can do multiple things at once at the same time so okay after this end do else and do if grown then harvest crop player grown equals false and can place equals true sorry can place equals true okay so that's this script Let's go back to the game. Let's go ahead and test this out once and for all. Okay, so we have, oh, sorry. <laughs> As you can see, I wrote prompt wrong. So there, there we go, the P. So one more time, let me speed it up for you guys. There we go. As you can see, we are now having our seeds grow into nice wheat, and then we can grow one more time with no issues. Thank you guys very much for watching my video. Make sure to subscribe. We are getting pretty close to 1,000 subscribers, which is very nice. So make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys. Have a nice day.